Bud playing around the Eden. In this floodplain of Eden, uh, we find uh, quite a uh, large uh, marsh area. We'll make a circle uh, in this floodplain area. You can see there's clear cutting of the uh, trees uh, in this area. And uh, we'll, we'll circle now and uh, come around. And you should get a good view looking down the floodplain of the River Denny's. is 12.56. We've just circled uh, Eden and uh, we're heading out uh, River Denny's. It's June 24th, 1996 and we're on uh, tape three flying at about 550 feet and uh, about 90 knots. Again, we're just getting back into that constrained channel area. It looks like it's been dredged almost. Uh, either that or it's been an abandoned channel on the far side, on the north side. And then as you get uh, further down again, you see a sort of a levee along the side of the channel on the south side this time. And uh, very little beach development. More of a low uh, stabilized scarp. Very little farming on this north side. And for, in fact, the road uh, that leads along here is leading towards that large stratified drift deposit where there seems to be uh, mining. There's a few houses along here. There's one new road going down to the river. Very shallow as we cross the bridge uh, coming up into view. crossing the bridge at Mahoney's Point. Uh, and then we'll start to pick up uh, that stratified deposit in the back shore and the mining that's going on. Time is 12.58. We're just coming up to those stratified deposits mapped by Doug Grant of the GSC. They're used for sand and gravel mining by a concrete uh, firm in Wicagama. The shore itself is quite sandy with sand erosional cliffs. There's sand deposits offshore and although the beach isn't well developed, it's mostly vegetation, there is a good supply of sediment. And then we're just going to go out around uh, Lewis Islands. It's a fairly low-lying area. It's uh, June 24th, 1996, and it's uh, 1,300 hours, and we're flying at about 400 feet. We're just at the head of the Denny Basin in the Bredore Lakes, and uh, we're just going around Lewis Island uh, this area I was just uh, talking about was uh, fairly well contaminated. It used to be good oyster ground, and uh, there's uh, some herring fishing in the area as well, uh, or spawning grounds. Um, we're going around Lewis Island, which is quite low-lying, uh, very poorly developed beaches, although there's some dune grass, some uh, looks like old grass uh, thrown up on top of the dune grass. And then we're going to go into um, Seal Cove, the time uh, 1301 and uh, 400 feet and uh, about uh, 70 knots. We're just 
making a uh, turn around. It's a very low lying wetland. Uh, there's no obvious source of discolored water or those discolored vegetation in some of the wetlands here. Uh, not sure where that would be coming from. As we go up Seal Cove, uh, we're flying at about uh, 400 feet. Very little beach development. Uh, a lot of vegetation in the water it looks pretty stagnant in places uh, down below us. Um, there's some cobble uh, lag in the near shore. The beach is very poorly developed, mostly vegetated shores. And uh, the back shore is treed uh, brush, uh, no real well scarps. We circle around the highway at Seal Cove. See here's a fairly large farm. Uh, there's a good view looking down uh, Seal Cove towards Hector McLean Point. at about 400 feet, uh, about 70 knots, it's 1308. McLean Point is coming up in the view. You can see a, uh, a shallow area extending off to the buoy just in the water. Extends off of uh, McLean Point and connects uh, at the barrier uh, beach uh, fronting this small pond. Looks to be uh, mostly a sand beach, dune grass. Nice little uh, beach ridges formed. And then as you follow farther along uh, McLean Point, you get into a fringing beach, uh, very low lying back shore, vegetated with trees and scrub brush. And then the near shore is uh, more homogeneous sand and uh, uh, oh, some type of cobble, but mostly sand. This is called the North Basin, and we'll be just coming up to McLean Cove, the youth camp in uh, this part of the bay. And we're heading towards Orangedale, which used to be one of the big centers on this part of the Verdor Lakes. Coming around this point, uh, very sandy foreland, uh, some little recurve uh, ridges around it, and then uh, in the just around the corner, you get more pebble and sand on the beach. Back shore is a very low, maybe less than three meter high scarp. And then in the cove itself, uh, McLean Cove, you can see the road runs right along the edge of the, uh, the so-called beach. We're heading into uh, Orangedale. Orangedale used to, like I said, used to be one of the big centers along here. It still is a fairly uh, major area. Coming into Blues Cove, the old railway uh, embankment. Coming up Orangedale, the old railway station. So the railway went by here and sort of left uh, the uh, West Bay area out of it. Pretty little spot, 